We've seen some useful ways to store and manipulate data so far, and it would be a real, it would be really nice to be able to display that data in ways that might help our users to understand or to interpret that data. And one way that we can do that is with graphing. So today we're going to learn a new package, a new library in Python called matplotlib. Our basic steps whenever we want to work with matplotlib are that we need to create a plot object so that we can then fill that plot object with some data and some labels to things and then display that plot object. So we'll start out with a really, really simple example. The goal will be to plot a week's weather forecast, but we'll start in the simplest level where all we're doing is just showing the numbers first, and then we'll go through and add labels and other information to it. In Jupyter, because it's not running in a window as its own program, we have to provide this little line of information to Jupyter to tell it we would like our plots to display in line. This means that they'll display below the, the block where we've written this code rather than like popping out a whole new window or things like that. If you run matplotlib or Python in general on your own machine, not on Jupyter in a, in a browser window, then you can skip this line. It will just create plots as windows for you. Here's the line where we import matplotlib. It's got a fairly long name and the subset of its behavior that we want is the pyplot section. And so we're going to give it a nickname. So this imports matplotlib's pyplot subsection and nicknames it as plt so that we can do things like this down here and not have to type out matplotlib.pyplot every time. So we've got a list of the temperatures. These are the predicted highs for the next few days and they are the values that we want to show in our plot, all we have to do is say plt.plot, this will create a new plot, and feed it those high temperatures as uh, the variable name. And this starts to build the plot for us. And if we want to, we can show the plot now. So that would give us a plot with a few different values shown on it. One issue is that the axes of that plot aren't labeled, so it would be pretty hard for our users to understand what we're actually showing there. So we add some labels to it. Label to the y-axis because the numbers that you give here will be by default the y values. The label for the y axis is temp in degrees Fahrenheit. And we've chosen that based on the example we're working on. Then the label for the x axis will be the day. Because if you think about each entry in here, as we step forward one entry, we're stepping into the next day's forecast. It will automatically use the indices in the list to indicate what the values are for the x-axis. We didn't provide any information directly for the x-axis, but matplotlib knows that this is one item and this is the next and this is the next. They're in index 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. And so it infers that information as the x values associated with each y value here. And so the only thing that we've changed is that we added the x label and y label. All the other lines stayed the same. Now the user would be able to tell what we're actually plotting. We could 
add another row of data to our, our plot here by simply calling plt.plot with an additional list. So here we have now the highs that we had originally, and we would have the lows, and it would label these as, or it would show these as different colors, potentially, and then we'd be able to distinguish between the two of those as they're being shown. I believe it defaults to a line graph for each, so we would have two different lines shown for each of these. We would probably want to make sure that the user could tell what those two different lines meant. So we have to do two things for that. If we want the highs to be labeled high temp, then we need to provide a label for the high temperatures, and then we can provide a label for the low temperatures, but that alone is not enough. We also have to tell the plot to add a legend or a key that would show this color or this pattern of line matches to high temperatures and this color and this pattern of line matches to low temperatures. And then we would have a nice way for the user to tell then which line is which so that they could see. Now in this case it might be a little obvious because the low is always lower than the high, but particularly when you're comparing things and their lines might cross or you might be trying to choose which thing is better, that could be important that you make sure that the, um, that the different entries, the different rows of data are labeled as well. We can also plot on two dimensions. So here we have two lists of data, but we want them to be used to generate one line one, one entry into the graph. And so they, if we need those to match up to be one would be the X values and the other would be the Y values, then the two lists have to be the same length. The plot will cause errors for us, or at least warnings, if our two lists aren't the same length, because the first full point on our plot will be at y value 2.6 and x value 4.99. I believe that that's the ordering that it will do. And we could similarly add some labels, make sure that those, because the plot will not necessarily know that the first value given is, or that the x value is prices and the Y value is ratings in the sense that it won't know the words for them. We've given them variable names, but the computer doesn't know that we want that variable name displayed, for instance. Um, and maybe we want a little more descriptive variable names, like we want to say lowest prices and Amazon ratings or something like that, because we're trying to choose um, you know, quality of product versus price here. We can see, sure, we could get it cheap, but people have said it's not as good. Or we could get it a little more expensive, but people have said that it's better. So this just shows part of what we might want to do. But to get the X and Y to be data that we've provided that match up, then we need to provide two lists in the same call to plot. And then we could do all of the other labeling and things that we normally would want to do. So here's an example for you that we might have some time to do in class that we could plot Indiana's population over about a 90 year period. We have the values for each year and the population number for that year. And so again, we can turn one value, one set of those values into the X values, one set of those values into the Y values. So we would make a list out of the years 
and we would make a list out of the population counts. We could provide the years as one of the lists when we call plt.plot, and we could provide the population as the other list. That would cause the year to be the x value and population to be the y value. And then we would also want to make sure that we label the axes so that we can tell and users of our of our plots if we save them and send them to someone they can tell what the information is there you also can add other information to the plot like titles and so it might be useful to look into some other examples and some other of the features that are available matplotlib is pretty powerful there are lots of other plotting libraries in Python too, um, and so there's a wide range of things that you can do to display data and to gain useful new information from those graphs and those plots. I want to backtrack and point back out two things we did just so that you understand them. We did an import of matplotlib's pyplot section of that library, but we didn't just import it. We gave it a shorter name. We said we would like to import it, but we'd like to call it PLT. And that's fine. You can actually do that with any import that you do. Um, so it gives it a, sh a nickname. Probably you're making a shorter one. Sometimes you might give it a nickname so that it doesn't conflict with something else with the same name. For example, if you were importing the square root function, you could give it a nickname if you already have your own square root function and you don't want their names to conflict. And then second, I want to go back to that line that I sort of dismissed earlier and point out the Jupyter Notebooks is its own piece of software. It's not Python. Python is the programming language and Jupyter Notebooks is the tool that allows us to run Python in our browser windows. And so for that reason, sometimes we need to give commands that are only to Jupyter, not to Python. This indicates what we've written is not normal Python code using that percent sign at the start. And it tells the notebook software directly other information for how our code should be run. For example, this one says that the plots that we create should be displayed right in the notebook page, not popping out a new window or anything like that, or saving it to a file. Those may be other available options, um, but this one allows us to just stick to the notebook and have things plugged right in there. So matplotlib is one plotting library that you can use in Python. It's set up for us in Jupyter. You have to use a little bit of extra magic to tell Jupyter what to do with those plots that are generated. But once you do, all you really need to do is feed in one or more lists, possibly a pair of lists for x, y axis, or possibly multiple sort of rows of data or multiple lines to be plotted on your plot. You should really make sure to mark up the plot with labels to the axes and labels to each line that's shown possibly a title to the plot, then you can save them and share them with other people, embed them in web pages, or use them later in other parts of your program as well.